Welcome and thank you for watching the USF Chemistry Department Lab Safety Video presented by graduate students Douglas Franz, Matthew Samowski, and Alekia Nimagata. The first topic covered will be gloves. There are a few types of gloves that we're going to present. First is a disposable surgical type glove, which is appropriate for incidental contact and general use. These will be nitrile gloves, which are preferred over latex because of their chemical resistance tendency to visibly rip when punctured and to prevent possible latex allergies. More substantial gloves are required for extended use, for example, norfoil gloves for highly toxic materials that are especially absorbed through the skin. This is an example of some highly non-permeable norfoil gloves, which are used in this example for using materials in a strong base bath containing potassium hydroxide. The next example of gloves are the oven mitts or oven gloves, which are used to remove high temperature glassware and other equipment from ovens. Notice the gloves are worn before opening the oven and have a long sleeve to prevent any heat damage to the skin along the upper arm. And should be handled with special care because of the fact that they are hot. Nitrile gloves are a common standard for laboratory use and can be used in all cases where a special type of glove is not needed. An example of this would be washing glassware with water, soap, and acetone. Most general use nitrile gloves are water resistant or even waterproof. The factors that should be considered for glove selection include chemical type, temperature extremes, physical hazards such as sharps or piercing objects, pH, toxicity, and infectious potential of biological hazards. Gloves should always be replaced as soon as signs of degradation appear. Lab personnel should wash their hands immediately after using gloves, even if they don't appear to be contaminated. Remember to always dispose of gloves in the proper receptacle, considering the hazard involved. If there is no apparent contamination, they can go in the regular laboratory trash, but otherwise they should go in the appropriate radioactive or biological hazard disposal units. The proper way to remove gloves without risking exposure to contamination is to remove one glove with the other by pinching the palm of the opposite one, wrapping that glove in the hand remaining with the glove, and taking the clean thumb or index finger and putting it underneath the glove on the other hand to remove the other one. The inside of the glove can then be touched, wrapped up, and thrown away in the proper place. The next topic is compressed gas cylinders. Never drag or slide cylinders even for short distances. Also never drop cylinders or permit them to strike each other violently. Do not subject any cylinders to mechanical shocks that may cause damage to the valves or the surface of the cylinder. Do not permit oil, grease, or other readily combustible materials to come into contact with cylinder valves. Do not remove product labels or shipping hazard labels. And finally, do not refill compressed gas cylinders. This is to be done only by qualified producers of compressed gases. Failure to follow proper safety protocol with gas cylinders could result in an explosion which can cause injury and even death. A typical gas cylinder is composed of multiple parts, the first being the tank that holds the gas. This is typically a thick metal like steel that is able to hold a highly pressurized gas. Gas cylinders are always stored properly in upright position, not on the ground. There is a strap securing the gas cylinder to the lab bench and there is a latch securing the cylinder on the lab bench 
with metal screws. Every gas cylinder in standard lab use has a valve attached to the top of the cylinder to regulate airflow coming out of the cylinder. This should be always turned off or even removed and fully closed when the cylinder is not in use. Remember the following storage do's and don'ts when considering where to place and how to place compressed gas cylinders. Particularly note that they should not be placed in high temperatures in the presence of smoking or near corrosive materials. When transporting a gas cylinder, it should be placed on a proper gas cylinder dolly, like this one. Normally, the cylinder would be on top of the dolly and the chain would be wrapped around the cylinder for security. When the cylinder is ready, ready to be placed in a permanent place, it can be removed from the dolly by setting the dolly down and undoing the chain. Proper lab safety attire should be worn during this process, as in all processes in the lab. Finally, be sure to never leave a gas cylinder valve open, especially with no one to attend to it, as is the case in this hallway. The last topic covered is safety helmets. There are several types of safety helmets known as hard hats, but the most common is known as HDPE or high density polyethylene helmet. These are more co cost effective but are heavier and require more material for shock resistance. The other kind is ABS acrylonitrile butadiene styrene helmets. These have excellent impact resistance and can be made lighter with less material but cost more money. The most updated standard to regulate hard hats comes from the American National Standards Institute. It states that all must have a 500 gram 3 meter vertical drop resistance for both type 1 and 2 hard hats. Type 1 hard hats only provide vertical drop protection. Type 2 provide vertical and lateral impact resistance. There are subclasses of hard hats which provide resistance to high voltage, for example, class G, which is 2200 volts, class E for 20,000 volts, and class C, which is a conductive hard hat with no insulation provided. We ran multiple tests on a standard high-density polyethylene hard hat to see if we could break it using rubber and metal hammers. The hard hat proved to be quite hard in that it resisted both rubber and metal strikes even at high velocity. We couldn't even run over the hard hat with a car. Remember always to follow best safety protocols and use all proper personal protective equipment. Don't fool around like this guy. And finally, thank you for watching.